Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy. For today's video, we will be uh, veering off to a different thing. I know that it's been decluttering and decluttering. So this time around, it will be a totally uh, different topic, but still within what we normally discuss. And this is going to fall under kind of like how to improve your things one video at a time. But this time around, I'm going to be talking about something that I have been for the last 10 years or so and i thought everybody knew there is everything to know about being an independent contractor but a recent conversation actually changed my mind and i realized that we need more information about this we need more videos especially because since the pandemic has already eased up a lot of people are trying to get their feet into you know becoming an independent contractor and it seems a lot of them don't know what they're getting into. If this is something that is of interest to you, I hope you go ahead and stay tuned. Okay, we are back. So again, my name is Kathy, and on this channel, we talk a lot about diamond painting, journaling, decluttering. We also talk about unboxings, reviews, and first impressions. So if this is something that is of interest to you, I hope you go ahead and stay tuned. Leave a comment, like, share. Best of all, subscribe, ring the bell. Any kind of interaction is super appreciated by small YouTubers like myself. So for today's video, it's going to be all about what is an independent contractor and everything that you need to know about it. Or not everything, but you know, kind of important things. Um, so first, what is an independent contractor? So an independent contractor is very much like a freelancer, okay? So you're not really employed by a company, but most of the time, freelancers, they only work certain hours or like a few hours a week, a day. Whereas most of the time, if you are an independent contractor, you will be required to work 40 hours a week. Most of the time, it's 40 hours a week. So that's eight hours a day. But you are not employed by the company. You are an independent contractor, which means there are no none of the usual benefits. But it's a case-to-case -case basis depending on the company. But normally, independent contractors, no benefits. You get paid. It is non-taxable. It's your responsibility to pay your taxes. Um, but you also don't get SSS, PhilHealth, um, and again, no tax deductions. So you don't want to pay your taxes, that's up to you. Uh, you want to pay your taxes, that's also up to you. But the company is not uh, responsible for that, okay? So that's the first thing about being an independent contractor. You are technically not employed. You are just an independent contractor. But you are most of the time required to do 40 hours a week. Okay, next. So if you are an independent contractor, most of the time you need to have your own equipment, okay? Uh, they're not going to be provided to you. There are companies that provide it, but you need to give it back when you resign or when the contract is up or they let you go. So ideally, it's better to have your own equipment so that you know, you're know you not responsible for another thing because if you break it, then you pay for it, right? Uh, so nowadays, uh, if you are an independent contractor and you have your own laptop, it should at least be an i5. It should at least have 8 gig of uh, RAM. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, RAM. And then storage of at least 500 gig because there's going to be a lot of files. If you're a graphic designer, there's a lot of design, there's a lot of apps. So you need to make sure that your equipment can actually compete with what's needed or demanded of you for your employment, so to speak. Again, employment. You're not really employed if you are an independent contractor. So that's why you need your own equipment. For those asking, ha, why? Because you don't go to an office. Okay, so you will be working from home. That's the first thing about the independent contractor. You are working from home. And Telegian, it's almost always a US company, but it can also be a company in Australia, in the UK, or anywhere else in the world. Though, mas maraming from the US. Okay? So, third one is the time okay so it's 40 hours now a week and since most of them are u.s you're required to work at night 
there are a few companies who are okay with you working on your own time but most of them are still like we want to be able to reach out to you when you want to so there's gonna be a fixed time so it's like working in the office but you're working from home and you're working the night shift but it could be mid shift it could be also a day shift so hindi naman na ah independent contractor gabi na no it's just that almost always it is but there are a few exceptions to the rule so you just need to remember that you're not fully employed because you're an independent contractor so no benefits you need to have your own equipment okay and then you need to be able to adjust to the schedule of uh, the person who is employing you so to speak and most of the time these are American companies kaya gabi uh, and remember if it's a US company you need to know if they're on PST, CST, MST, EST what do those mean time zones so remember in the US they have four different time zones each one adjusting an hour so pag sinabing Eastern Standard Time most of the time that's 12 hour different from us 1 p.m. dito 1 a.m. sa kanila easiest to remember except when it's daylight saving time but that's another whole video and then kapag I think it's ECMP so pag Central it's 13 hours Pagka mountain, it's 14 hours. Pagka uh, Pacific, it's 15 hours. So, yun yung mga time difference. And you have to remember that or calibrate your laptop that your calendar calibrates with them. That when they schedule, it will affect the Manila time for you so that you don't get all kinds of confused and, you know, keep on missing meetings, which normally happens kapag baguhan pa. Like, ha? Huh? Diba ganitong oras yung meeting? So, wala. Tapos na yung meeting. So, parang, <gasps> Okay? Okay. And uh, the fifth thing that I would share to anyone who wants to be an independent contractor is when they ask, how much were you previously making? Dagdagan na ng very, very light. And then ask for something. Say, you're aiming for a certain amount. Add 20% to that. <gasps> Grabe, Kati, bakit? No, because they will always haggle. Okay? So, kunwari, you're earning $1,000. So, mo, oh, I actually was earning $1,000. And then they're gonna ask, how much do you expect to make? You can either go A and say, uh, I was actually hoping to make $1,500. Pero yung goal mo lang talaga is $1,200. Chances are, baka makuha mo yung $1,200 na yon Because they're gonna say, oh, actually, uh, the highest is this. Or two, you can be smart about it. And you can say, actually, I was wondering what is the range for this position. Kasi sasabihin nila, actually, we're thinking of paying between $1,200 to $1,500. And then you go for, I would say, ha, $100 lower. Para hindi ka naman gahaman yung dating na parang, ah, oh, kaya nga tinanong, no? kasi ganon. No, you go, oh, okay, I was actually eyeing $1,400. So, suave pa rin. But at the same time, you know, you got the gist of, ah, ito yung highest to be paid. Let's just go $100 lower. What if you wanted something higher? Then you can say, actually for my skill set and based on the experiences that I have and what I know I can bring to the table, char, what I can bring to the table, I believe that I actually, um, you know, uh, should get paid $1,800. But that's a gamble. But sabi nga nila, no guts, no glory. And what's the worst thing that can happen? Na, oh, too expensive. They're not the company for you. Okay? And I know it's easy to say that when you don't need a job, but when you do, uh, medyo kalma-kalma ka, diba? That's why you ask, like, what's the range? And then negotiate from there. Okay, so those are kind of the, the very important things that you need to know if you're planning on becoming an independent contractor, Okay? Payment is normally per month, but they do pay some, most of them eh, pay like yung sa atin, like quincenas, katapusan, or 1025. Though some of them pay weekly, some of them oh, once a month. Pina, for me, I find it really stressful if they pay once a month. Unless you're super good with handling your finances, which I, I'm still not. It's such a struggle, kasi parang, oh no, nagastos ko na dito. So just make sure that, you know, um, find out how they're going to pay you and then take it from there. 
Okay, so let's just do a super quick recap. Sana malala ko lahat ng sinabi ko. An independent contractor, you are not employed, employed. You are uh, you are working for the company, but you are not employed by the company. Oh, super important. They can fire you anytime without a valid reason. I think that's the biggest downside of being an independent contractor is most of them can just let you go without warning. If they have a heart, they'd let you go with like a month's pay. Um, if heartless talaga sila, wala na, goodbye and that's it. That's why it's important that you know you are able to save up money because that is the most precarious thing about being an independent contractor. Okay, and then just remember that you need to have your own equipment. Some of you can get lucky and they will provide it for you. I personally have never said yes to that because you're responsible for a laptop that's not yours. And if for any reason it breaks, you're going to have to pay for it. And I just don't want that responsibility. At least if it's my own, it's mine, diba? Um, And I'd have freedom to, like, design it or anything. Like, not that I super design, but because I kind of, like, doing things like this. So, see? Um, this is my Asus Zen book. Uh, and it's been with me for, like, over five years. Super gaan. Super, like, functional. Like, it does everything I need it to do, Okay. Um, how simple plug ng Asus. But it really, really works kasi. So, ayun. So, they're gonna ask you to have your own equipment. You will most likely have to adhere to the time of the company. So, when we see you I'm an independent contractor of 85. No. <laughs> no. Just no. Find out the, uh, the time of the company. And most of the time, like when you go to Indeed.com, nakalagay naman eh, if it's day shift, night shift, graveyard, mid shift. Learn to read, okay? You have to learn to read. Uh, and then, yun na nga. So, night shift, tas they can let's let go anytime. And then, the oras. Be mindful of the time. Because the time difference can be crazy. Another thing uh, I'm just gonna add here is that it can get lonely. Totoo yan. It can get lonely. So, be sure that, you know, you have things to keep you company. You have things, some someone who's also working the same time as you aside from your you know um co-workers because it can get lonely um and it does take a lot of discipline you know it does take a lot of discipline when you plan on becoming an independent contractor so i hope that kind of answers the basic questions as to what an independent contractor is okay and if you do have questions feel free to ask below i'll make sure to do another video answering your questions i just hope that this is something that can help someone out because when i was new to this nobody was explaining so parang oh it's like this oh it's like this. oh my god it works that way okay oh and um no maps and sirs when you're speaking with your co-workers your colleagues even the ceo the uh, coo tayo mga pinoy lang yung mahilig mag ma'am sir no call them by their name it is not disrespectful you are not their slave you are not their helper you are a co-worker so they really don't like the whole uh mamsers so again i hope that this was helpful if it was please give this a thumbs up again um i'll see you guys on the next video bye